Hello and welcome to our webinar series titled Designing Healthy Spaces Post-COVID-19. I'm Nishant Goyal, an architect, planner, and building designer. And I welcome you to our fifth webinar titled Redefining Residential Spaces. So how will our residences respond to the changes in lifestyle post-COVID? So we have thought about it on three, three main uh, parameters. The first being safety and security. So in a residence, a residence is primarily a private space where you actually don't need to do too much, uh, too many changes in your private space. But yes, wherever there are public interactions and there is movement of external uh, people, then those areas have to be carefully looked at. So making thresholds, disinfection areas, and some extra storage space to keep any material that comes from outside for the specified duration is very, very important. The second parameter is hygiene. With everyone working from home, how does our residents respond to this new normal of work from home? What are the equipments that we might have to uh, build, in, build into, our, into our residences, maybe for disinfection or for any other sanitization or any other thing? And then flexible spaces, because now we are not using our home as just a living space. We're using it for work, we're using it for recreation, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, maybe we need to have flexible spaces to respond to this new normal. And then finally, healthy spaces. What about the neighborhood culture now? If from two months we are all in lockdown and we've not met our neighbors, we've not interacted physically with people. So what happens to our neighborhood culture? What happens to the indoor air quality uh, in, in our space? Because we are breathing it uh, for 24 hours a day. And what about our food? How, does, how do we uh, make sure that we are having healthy, healthy food and efficiency, whether it's energy, water, or any other parameter? So the first parameter, like I said, was safety and security. So how do we uh, keep our residences safe from biocontaminants? Um, the thresholds are extremely important. The screening, various types of screening, whether it's temperature screening or disinfection methods, are extremely important to keep the biocontaminant out of our residential spaces. Creation of barriers between outdoors and indoors, and making sure that we have isolation rooms planned so that if there is a chance of uh, contamination to anyone in our family, then the person can easily self-isolate. So I'm going to showcase uh, what I mean by uh, creating these thresholds by, uh, through, through, uh, through, through the layout plan of a project that we are doing. It's a typical uh, building being designed in, you know, like we design an NCR with a stilt floor and four, four residential floors above. And what we are doing here is we are creating uh, these buffer sanitizing zones uh, at, uh, at the stint level where um, before the entry to, to, to the staircase and the lift lobby, as well as an individual floor. So if you see the sketch of the stilt, we are creating this additional um, buffer sanitizing zone where anyone who enters the building, whether it is the servants who have to go access the servant room at the back, or it is any person accessing uh, the above upper floors. He has to go through this zone where there will be thermal screening, there will be sanitization station. So it's a transition space really uh, to ensure that contaminant gets trapped in this area and does not enter deep inside the building. And then when you come to your individual floor, we are, uh, so the box that you see in yellow, this is like the entrance lobby, which is now being thought of as a sanitization buffer. So anything that you bring from outside, whether it's your shoes or any bag that you may have purchased or gone with outside or anything, it just comes in and you have to leave it here so that that material does not go straight into the house. And then there is a washroom connected to it. So this powder toilet or this washroom is actually going to act like a, uh, is going to act like a sanitization station where you can uh, wash things in soapy water, you can sanitize them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then the guest room or whatever space you have 
near the near the uh, entrance buffer that can double up as a flexible space for a lot of things so in this case we are we are also proposing an additional storage here which in which you can keep or any material that you purchased from outside so that it it sort of stays in that space for a little while uh, along with the disinfection and sanitization and only after uh, the the requisite time period is it allowed to come into the house plus you can have uv light uh, disinfectants here uh, and you'll see as we move up along in the presentation this space can also double up as an isolation room in emergency or as an external study uh, as required and then um, so this is an example of an independent house a bungalow style residence that we we are doing so in this we have charted out the actual movement of people so if you see the uh, from the right side from the center is the main entrance to the house which is for any guests or for uh, the the residents the owners of the house and again we have created an interesting uh, a nice large sanitization buffer um, right at the entrance where which can act as both a disinfectant area and a sanitization area for anything from coming from outside in this house there is a there is a formal drawing room so that again is is designed such that it's connected to the sanitization buffer and it's separate from the rest of the private spaces of the house and then you have the movement of the maids and and you know kitchen materials and things like that which is a separate movement pattern and again before the kitchen we are creating a buffer zone here uh, coming to a group housing so this is a layout of one of our projects from a group housing uh, again here there are two entries uh, one is for the owners and the guests or any other uh, person who comes in into the house and there is a second entry um, most group housing spaces have small servant rooms which are accessed from the lobby directly and these servant rooms are then connected through a balcony to a kitchen so the balcony space between the servant room and the kitchen actually becomes the the sanitization buffer space so that all your vegetables or anything that you buy from outside which may come by a, either a courier or uh, through home delivery or self bought out items they are sort of kept in that uh, buffer space sanitized properly and only then will they enter the kitchen then disinfection i mean a lot of uh, self disinfection kits available in the market a lot of uv uh, uv box types uv you know microwave style um, uh, fixtures available which can be used um, to uh, to disinfect uh, uh, any material that has come from outside but yes um, sanitization disinfection are extremely important and they will become or rather they already have become a part of our life um, post covid and then isolation rooms so like i was talking about earlier you know maybe the guest bedroom in your house it can it it will serve a few functions i mean it it will serve as a public study also it might serve as an office space but uh, your furniture should be such that you can easily make it into an isolation space and ensure that the person who self isolating for let's say 14 days has the basic amenities available there you know he has access to television there's a study table for him there's storage space there's a toilet attached so on and so forth uh, there's good light and ventilation so that the person um, feels taken care of when he uh, when he or she is uh, is isolating himself the second parameter is hygiene and first and foremost i mean how do we actually uh, mold our residence spaces to this new hygiene because my house is now just not my living area it's also my office it's my workplace it's my school so typically if there is a family of four you know the both the kids are going to school they need a study and a soundproof zone of their own because they have online classes and the husband and wife have their office to attend to from home so uh, so you know uh, th these images show a lot of you know uh, different uh, postures in which people have been working from home and which is not good for health so we will all need to start having and planning uh, study spaces formal study spaces inside our our residential uh, area so um, again um, coming back to a project that we're designing you'll find that 
we are actually incorporating two study spaces, two formal study spaces on the floor plan that we had designed. So, you know, uh, so two people can actually have a soundproof study area. Uh, and if there are more people, then, you know, all bedrooms also have um, study desks, um, you know, properly placed and planned in them. Uh, the living area, the, the study in the living area is also, is, is like a flexible partition of a study area, which can also double up as a larger living room if required in the evenings or when the entire family is together. So, but having said that, ultimately, uh, every, every person has to uh, think about the relevant solutions and, and, and make studies, you know, studies which are, which are secluded, they are soundproof, where, where you, you, would, you would enjoy working because, uh, you know, we might be uh, working for six to eight hours, maybe even more in that space. So it has to be a good, uh, well-defined and well, uh, uh, you know, with, with a lot of uh, all the amenities that you're used to at your workspace. These spaces are very important now. Similarly, there's also a concept called the clo office, you know, which is basically a closet, which is a study. So if you can't carve out uh, an entire space, uh, which you may call as a study, you can actually convert your closet, you know, one of your closets into a study so that uh, your papers, your equipment, your, your, your things are not sort of uh, lying in the open when you're not on the desk, um, so to say. So it's very important to have that private space and to, and to, and to be sort of, um, and, and to have claim over the space such that your papers, et cetera, will not get disturbed uh, once you're not using the study because you may have kids at home, you know, who, who, who might just, you know, take a piece of paper which was important to you and scribble on it. So, uh, a, a, you know, converting a cupboard into, into an office or into a study actually uh, solves a lot of issues. Similarly, you know, uh, the second most important point in hygiene is, is what type of equipments will come into our houses? Is there actually uh, too many equipments that we'll start using? Well, the answer is no, it's just very simple equipment. So once you've made your thresholds, you've made, you've, you've sort of thought it through that what would be the public areas of the house and what would be the private areas. And then you can just install a few little, uh, little gadgets that can help you. So of course, you know, the main door handles where you are, entering the house from ideally those should be touchless or you can you know install little attachments to them uh, you can install attachments to the rest of your house doors so that you know the maids and uh, and other staff who may be coming from outside don't actually touch the handles uh, with their hand or make uh, or make a routine of sanitization of these handles etc once they've completed their cleaning and they're sort of moving out um, UV disinfectant boxes can be thought of, antiviral services. A lot of, uh, if you're planning to buy furniture, you can speak to your, uh, to your furniture house about using antiviral laminates, etc. All companies have come out with, with special coatings designed as antiviral coatings, you know, on their, uh, on their surfaces. Of course, sanitizers, uh, kitchens. So uh, this is an example of a UV disinfectant uh, sanitizer which is actually, it looks like a microwave. Of course, we've already been getting a lot of these, uh, you know, wash, washing of vegetables, etc. gadgets that can be used. Um, kitchens, you could install touchless taps because, you know, your maids, etc. will be uh, using it. Uh, please make a schedule for proper um, disinfection and sanitization of the kitchen before and after every meal. Uh, and simple things like this, you know, uh, nothing major. Uh, you don't need to go out and, you know, change a lot of equipments in the house. Um, the third part of hygiene is actually flexible spaces. Now, the space is limited and now we're using it for 24 hours. We're using it for, for, for different types of functions. So how can actually my space actually double up as, as something else it, as and when required? And, you know, flexible partition systems give you that option. Once, uh, you know, the lockdown is gradually opening. So once it's fully open, you can actually start installing you know these uh, flexible spaces so if you have a very large living uh, living dining area you could just install one partition which when pulled could become your study so you have a safe secure study space and then in the evenings once your office is over you could just open it and let the living room be as it was earlier or you could have a little uh, little isolation room planned you know uh, through one of these flexible spaces so very simple methods you know uh, 
just putting in some interesting sliding folding partitions can do that job for you. The second part is if you're actually looking at buying furniture or you're looking to redo a certain area in the house, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of things. One is furniture has a lot of potential. It, it's very flexible. So, uh, and your house, I mean, it could be a study, a living, a play area. Uh, I mean, kids used to go out in the, in, the, in the community park and play for at least one or two hours a day every day, which they've not been able to do for two months now. And you know, if you're if you're planning to build a new partition or planning to buy furniture, it might just be a good idea to to sort of uh, incorporate some play areas for the kids in it. And then, of course, you know, your storage, your study can be combined. Uh, if you're thinking of buying a bed, then it can actually double up as a study as well. So think of these options, you know, when you are buying furniture, because in the long run, if this if this lifestyle is going to stay, then we will need a lot more. Um, sort of uh, flexibility in furniture, et cetera, going forward. So that brings me to the third part, which is uh, healthy spaces. Ultimately, everyone's house, you, everyone wants their house to be healthy, whether it's uh, so, so that it's, it's fun to live in. And how can we promote healthy living in our residences? Um, as architects, when we used to design, uh, you know, group housing or et cetera, we used to pay a lot of attention to uh, you know, community spaces where people can can interact with each other. There could be chance encounters where you can actually uh, bump into people and you know make friends and and so so that the community bonding is is very close. But with but with this COVID coming in, everyone is so boxed in. We we've, we've not stepped out of our house for two months, let alone speak to our neighbor or or so you know there's a big chance that we may actually uh, start cutting ourselves out from the society and. And in that, and that will be that will be a shame because, uh, you know, uh, we would we would then not not interact with our neighbors at all, and the whole community uh, strength, the whole community bonding would would just disintegrate over time. So uh, so we've called it so we've coined a term for our projects, and we are calling it designing socially distanced community spaces, so that people can still interact and yet man maintain the hygiene of social distance. Um, so, so how can we actually promote this physical interaction while we maintain social distancing? How can we promote a sense of belonging, care and empathy towards our neighbor, even during these times? So, um, I mean, we, we did a lot of research, uh, looking at, uh, looking at traditional building aspects and how things were done, you know, earlier. And we realized that even then, you know, you, you had a lot of these courtyard houses, so you would have a lot of families living in living in one building and then the courtyard would work courtyard and the veranda together would work as these as these bonding areas where you know community areas where people could could just <clears throat> stand around and interact with each other plus there was always a threshold in those buildings and they would have a bed hut which was like you know uh, the drawing room or the study that we have today which would which would be a space for entertaining um, outsiders and then you know you had these these nice verandas and patios outside each building, which could, so that you could actually speak to the person outside uh, outside or to your neighbor while still being you know in your own private space. So um, how do we actually interpret it in the modern uh, day and age? So I, one thing is very important in 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 group housings etc. You know the patio, the balcony spaces are very very important. They are the key um, because because they will help you still maintain interaction with your neighbor uh, and your interaction with the outside space, because that's, that's like your piece of sky. That's where you'll come out and, and you'll enjoy a cup of tea, etc. you know, um, while you are, while you're breathing in fresh air. So uh, designing, carefully designing these balconies such that there, there is a playfulness about them. There is an, there is a, a, a sort of a, a language which helps you connect to the to your neighbor, you know, while you, so both of you might actually share a cup of tea in your own respective balconies, maintain social distancing, but still maintain physical contact or physical interaction, which is very important going forward. And then the second thing that we are implementing in our smart campuses, campus designs is virtual meeting rooms. 
so uh, we all used to go down to the park for you know uh, an hour in the morning or or an hour in the evening and meet people and interact with them well we could do it virtually so if each housing society had a virtual meeting room space where anyone could just log in and you know uh, meet people interact with people maybe play a game or two uh, together maybe maybe there could be you know tambola sessions um, in the evening for people or, or anything you know just to just to promote that interaction between people and that would go a long way in in retaining the neighborhood culture that we are all so fond of um and then your green spaces how will they change how will they adapt um, to the new social distancing norms i mean of course there's uh, there will have to be you know earmarked spaces where you know a, a family or or individuals could sort of uh, through some floor marking or or through some delineation actually maintain social distancing the benches will change i mean we we probably will not uh, get to see these long benches anymore they'll probably be segregated benches or the middle seat would be removed etc etc and your walking paths will have to be uh, defined um so that definitely is going to be is going to happen uh, the second important point is the air quality um, i've talked a lot about biophilic designs and throughout our webinars let's connect to nature nature is extremely important in a residence it helps you relax it helps you calm down and uh, let's focus on bringing nature into our residences and then uh, you know air quality they i mean we we we've all been uh, we've all been seeing the you know the, the various types of contaminants that are that are prevalent we used to deal with pm 2.5 pm 10 volatile organic compounds vocs and other toxic uh, you know gases you know carbon dioxide etc etc but now you know a biocontaminant has been added to the list and there are a lot of indoor plants that actually help you clean air so let's start you know uh, bringing these these indoor air quality plants uh, inside our residences to help in the indoor air quality and then uh, ishre has come out with a with with some very simple guidelines because most of us are using uh, splits or window acs in residences and uh, you know these these air conditioning units actually just keep recycling the air within a room whereas now you need to have fresh air inside so you may have to run your acs for a, for for some duration with with you know a window partially open etc um your fans your ceiling fans and your uh, and the exhaust fans of the of the washrooms can play a big role in churning the air creating those air changes inside the space which are very important um ensure that you know your air conditioning system especially if you're having a central vrf for a central air conditioning system has the right type of filters you know at least merc 14 filters which can actually trap the biocontaminants because as you see in this picture here the biocontaminant is only 0.1 micron and when you compare it to a red blood cell or to a pm 2.5 or pm 10 it's very very uh, you know minute so uh, temperature settings we all there's advisories um, everywhere about keeping it at 24 degrees relative humidity of your air conditioning system should be between 40 to 60 70% and if you're using coolers coolers are a great way that they bring in fresh air into the space but please use the right type of filters and ensure that the cooler is installed outside so that you are bringing outside air inside and not not just uh, using the air inside so these are some simple methods with which ishray has talked about and then the third one is about food and medicine so let's start growing our own food it's not difficult at all and it's just a it's, it's just a shift in the mindset mindset urban farming is the need of the hour we need to become self sufficient let our residences become as self sufficient as possible so that there is least amount of material coming in from outside if we can all grow our food we would have solved the problem of this chemical laden pesticide laden uh, you know food that we consume which leads to so many diseases that we that we all you know go through and you don't need much area in this project of ours that i showcase we've hardly used about 500 600 square feet of a kitchen garden space to actually feed the entire family of four and you know very few vegetables come from outside most of it is home home grown now you can put medicinal plants and uh, you know uh, in your kitchen garden and then efficiency uh, please think about energy you know we have to reduce energy in fact generate solar energy uh, 
use water, reuse water, you know, very simple uh, pipeline systems, reed bed systems are available, which can at least clean your water. At least your kitchen waste can be composted. Your kitchen water can be reused <clears throat> and things like that. Um, waste management. So, you know, if you're living in a group housing, start discussing amongst yourselves that you, that, you know, you should start putting, uh, you know, garbage chutes, etc., so that the waste is not, is not sort of uh, thrown around or, or, you know, uh, gets sort of uh, littered by manual uh, carrying, uh, etc. So, um, so that's uh, the presentation for me. Thank you so much for listening. Let's spread the word. Let's drive the change and let's start thinking and analyzing our residential spaces. I hope um, I've been able to showcase some very simple but, but important measures which we all can implement and make our residential spaces COVID ready. So thank you so much for listening.